Good morning to everyone. I am Saru Sahare, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, Anand Niketan College, Varora. And today we will discuss about the carbides. So firstly, we will see what are the carbides. Carbides are the compounds of carbon and less electronegative element. Z, that is calcium, aluminium or boron. Okay. The element having less electronegativity than the carbon. Then, uh, not those elements having the more electronegativity than carbon. For example, nitrogen, phosphorus, oxygen, sulfur and halogens. These elements have high electronegativity than the carbon and hence these are not of capable to form the carbides. So, carbides are the compound formed by the CZ. C means carbon and Z means less electronegative element. Then carbides are the binary compound. What are the binary compounds? Compounds that are formed by the two components. So here are two components. First is carbon and another is, uh, another is the less electronegative element than the carbon. So Carbides are the compound that are binary compounds formed by the carbon and less electronegative element. So, uh, classification of the carbides. Carbides are classified on the basis of chemical bonding. Uh, car carbides are classified on the uh, basis of the chemical bonding. Uh, so, which type of chemical bonding is present in the compound? On basis of that, the carbides are classified into three classes. First one is salt-like or ionic carbides. Second is covalent carbides. And third one is the interstitial carbides. So, we will discuss one by one. First is salt-like or ionic carbides. These carbides are formed by the strong electropositive elements. The elements from the group First day, second day and third day group. Okay. Uh, here is only one exception that is boron. Boron is not classified in these ionic carbides. So, ionic carbides are formed by the carbon and strong electropositive elements. Then, these compounds are ionic in nature. Okay. They are going to form the ions in their liquid state. They exist as a transparent crystal. Just like salt such as NaCl and a sodium chloride which is a white salt. So uh, like these salts they are uh, the transparent crystal uh, type of the salt. Then to, they do not conduct the electricity in their crystalline form. It means that they will only going to conduct the electricity in their ionic form. And they will do not going to conduct the electricity in their crystalline or solid form. Form. Then uh, which element are going to form the uh, these ionic carbides? So salt like or ionic carbides are uh, formed in the, by the elements shown in this periodic table having yellow color. The yellow color elements are going to form the ionic carbides. Now if we hydrolyze the ionic carbides the ionic carbides is going to react with the water to give the hydrocarbons. Okay, ionic carbides are going to produce hydrocarbons on the hydrolysis. So, the ionic carbides are going to produce the different type of hydrocarbon. Which type of hydrocarbon is produced? Depending on that, the ionic carbides are going to convert into methanides, acetylides or allylides. So, firstly we will see uh, uh, the methanides. What are methanides? Methanides are also ionic carbides. But on hydrolysis they will produce only methane. The methane producing carbides on hydrolysis are classified as the methanides. They contain C4- minus unit. Carbon having 4 minus charge. Then the example of this type of carbides are beryllium carbides or aluminium carbides. Beryllium carbides having formula Be2C and in aluminium carbides the formula is Al4C3. So we can see in both the case after reacting with the uh, water or after uh, undergoing hydrolysis they are going to produce 
CH4 that is methane and this is the structure of the aluminium carbide in which carbon is forming four bond with electropositive aluminium atom. So, carbon is carrying the four minus charge. Now, acetylides. What are the acetylides? Acetylides are the ionic carbides and they will going to produce acetylene on hydrolysis. And they contain C2 2 minus unit. Means two carbon combiningly share the two negative charge. The example of acetylides is calcium carbide. Having formula CaC2. So if we will hydrolyze this type of calcium carbide. It will produce C2H2 which is acetylene. And hence it is classified as acetylides. This is the. Uh, structure or formula of the calcium carbide in which we can see C triple bond C two carbons carrying the two negative charge. This is the uh, carbon unit in this acetylides. Now next class is allylides. Allylides are also ionic carbides and they are going to produce propyne on hydrolysis. Which type of group contain in these compounds? In this compound there is a C3-4- group. Means carbon, 3 carbon, carbon, single bond carbon, triple bond carbon. This type of carbon, uh, uh, 3 carbon uh, group is going to carry the 4 minus charge. This type of negative charge. So, uh, in this group this, this is the unit C3-4-. Now what is the example? The example is the magnesium carbide having formula Mg2C3. This is the magnesium carbide and upon hydrolysis it will produce the propyne CH3 C triple bond CH. This is the formula of propyne and hence it is classified into the allylides. Now covalent carbides. What are the covalent carbides? The covalent carbides are formed by the elements having almost equal electronegativity as that of the carbon. It means that covalent carbides are formed by the carbon and the element having almost equal electronegativity. For example, boron or silicon. Then the carbide of this type of uh, Covalent compounds or covalent bond forming these carbides are very strong in nature. They are highly stable at high temperature. Okay. They are highly stable at high temperature. Then the example of this type of carbide is boron carbide having formula B4C or silicon carbide having formula SIC. Now this silicon carbide is also known as the carborundum. Silicon carbide is also known as carborundum and it is very hard solid material. The image is shown in the figure. So, in this image we can see the carborundum that is silicon carbide and it is a very strong, very solid, very stable material. It is stable even at the 2000 to 2500 degrees Celsius. So, that much stability is found in carborundum. Now, the next and important class is interstitial carbides. Now, interstitial carbides are formed by the transition metals. What are the transition metals? Transition metals include nickel, cobalt, iron. So, these type of transition metal are going to form the this interstitial carbide. Now, the size of the transition metal is large because they are uh, uh, covering D shell also, but uh, carbon having less size, less atomic size. Hence, when this type of orange ball is showing the transition metal, the transition metal when bonded to each other, in this metal there is an interstitial space in between. And this interstitial space is occupied by the carbon. We will show this interstitial space by this uh, gray color ball. So, the interstitial space between this transition metal is occupied by the carbon. And 
hence we will uh, called uh, this type of carbides are the interstitial carbides then they have free electrons as they are the metals they have free electrons in their valence shell and hence they are good conductors of the electricity and as we know these are the transition metal and the property of, of this metallic property of the transition metal is remain unaffected after forming the carbides and hence we will call them also as a metallic carbides so this is about the interstitial carbides now what are the uses of carbides so carbides is used in uh, so many fields uh, carbides is generally used as a cutting tools for cutting the tools carbides is uh, used uh, the image is shown uh, which type of carbide or shapes are made for the from the carbides to cut uh, for use as a cutting tools then they are also uh, used uh, for the making crucible uh, here uh, i have shown the image of crucible uh, this is the crucible so uh, as we have uh, discussed that silicon uh, carbides are also very strong or other carbides are also strong and they are going to sustain on high temperature hence they are also used for making crucible the next use is uh, of boron carbide boron carbide is used in atomic reactor uh, as a shield against radiation means uh, the radiation is produced in the atomic reactor uh, to uh, to being safe boron carbides are used as a shield from this radiation then uh, they are also used in grinding wheels for sharpening the metals okay this is the grinding wheel so in grinding wheel also uh, boron carbides used for sharpening the metals the next is silicon carbide silicon carbide is used as an abrasive and as a refractory material as we have uh, seen the uh, image of the silicon carbide having somewhat uh, uh, lighting luster uh, so hence it is used as the refractory material and it is also highly stable at high temperature uh, then as the carbides have the carbon in negative oxidation state the carbides can be also used as the deoxidant in metallurgy field uh, then tungsten carbide the tungsten carbide is used in making tools uh, shown here uh, and uh, aluminum carbides is also used in the synthesis of methane as we have know that aluminum carbides on a hydrolysis produce methane uh, aluminum carbides is used in the synthesis of methane uh, similarly calcium carbide is also produce uh, acetylene on hydrolysis and hence it is used for synthesis of the acetylene so these are the uh, uses of carbides thank you for watching the lecture